Hello everyone. I waited a minute. I hope it showed before I started talking because it's real easy for me to talk too fast. I get so excited. I'm Becky Goldsmith. Thank you for joining me today for a time out. And it is raining like crazy here. I mean, really, it is raining like crazy outside. Um, so it's a little dark on the side where there's often sunshine. Anyway, I hope you guys are good and I want to tell you that the quilt behind me is Spring Wheels and it's in a book. What was it in? It was in Once Upon a Season which is now available as a downloadable ebook. Um, and then I also offered this pattern separately as a digital download. It's done on foundation papers but you know, as I showed you not all that long ago, you could convert this to an English paper piece pattern. Just saying, it's pretty fun. Okay, so what I'm talking to you about today is how to build a design wall, because my design wall is all behind me. And, you know, you see things go up and down on the design wall. I think it was Michael who emailed me this question about how to build one. Um, okay, here we go. So there is the design wall with almost nothing on it. I took this picture a couple of days ago and I moved some of the things out of the way, but not everything. So my design wall is nine feet wide and eight feet tall. It covers that whole end of my studio. What it's made from is uh, polystyrene insulation foam and the reason I'm showing you pictures from the internet is because why not show you pictures from the internet I bought mine from Lowe's and back in the day the brand I bought from Lowe's was blue and you could buy a similar thing from Home Depot and it was pink but also on the Lowe's site they had white. Now, I don't know if it says poly shield on both sides. This was just what was up on the internet. But it does come, these boards are four foot by eight foot, and they come in different thicknesses. And I used to think mine was always one inch thick, but I actually measured the edge, and it's closer to half inch to three quarter inch, somewhere in there. Now, I've got a short video that pans the wall. Let me show you this. The foam boards that are on the wall have been up, gosh, for at least 15 years. I covered it first with batting, but then some cat, one of our cats, decided they liked the batting a lot. So I took that off and recovered it with very wide flannel that I pre-washed. And you can see the flannel has been up there quite a while, so it's a little bit dirty at the bottom. And you can see the indentations of the screws. That doesn't bother me that much. In the center, at the bottom, where the cats rub up against it, you can tell where the seam is. As you go up the wall, it's much harder to see but it's there just a little bit, which is pretty nice because I use it as a vertical marker sometimes. Oh, <laughs> you got the end of that video where I was moving things around. You know what? I wonder if I can do this. Yes, I can. No, I can't. <gasps> it went away. I didn't know it would go away. <laughs> Gosh, you learn something new every day. Okay, so that was a picture of flannel. I went online and just did a quick Google of 108 inch wide flannel because that works on my wall. Um, what did I want to tell you? I wanted to tell you about the vertical seam and about the screws. What I decided I wanted to do for my wall was make it more or less permanent against the wall, but I didn't want to glue the sheets to the wall because that's like way too permanent. So we used sheetrock screws because they're 
designed to go into sheetrock and they have a big enough head so that when you screw them in, unless you screw them too fast, they'll hold the um, foam, foam board. And there's a lot more screws than just the indentations that you saw. I did not want to cover the boards with flannel or batting and then screw them up because I did not want to see the screw heads on the top of the board. I think Linda, I'm pretty sure Linda wanted to encase the foam boards with batting before she put them up because it was easier for her to cover the boards than it was to do what I'm going to show you later, which is spray glue the stuff to the wall. So you have options. Um, so there's the vertical seam. On my wall, there's a four foot board, a four foot board, and then I bought a third board and cut a one foot uh, tall section off of it. All of those are screwed to the wall. If you don't have a wall that you do not want to screw this board to, and I don't want to forget to say this, you can get the boards, cut them to the size that suits your space. Let's say you don't have eight foot tall, you've got something a little shorter. You can cover those and, and either lean them against the wall or put them on doors. I mean, there's a lot of places you want to look around your space and see where it works for you. If you can't leave a board up all the time and you cover the sections that work for you, you can store them under a bed, behind a door, in a closet. I know some people who have like those sliding doors that they put their design wall on those and sometimes they can slide them apart more and have more showing. There's, there's options for doing this. Now, some of you might like using, um, oh, they, 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 they goes together like a tent and it's a flannel -y sort of thing that um, is spring-like in this structure. I hope you know what I'm talking about. They're portable design walls. The downside to something that is not fixed to a board is that it moves. And if you hit it just wrong, you can knock everything off the board because it moves. If you pre-wash your fabric, you have less of a problem with stuff falling off, but not everybody does. And it, if you don't have a board behind the portable design wall to pin into, it's kind of hard to pin into a portable design wall, the stretchy fabric kind. Okay, so you've got the styrofoam boards of whatever thickness suits you on the wall wherever you like them or loose, and you're going to cover it. Now, I said I used batting once, and I, I used a cream-colored bat. I can't remember exactly what it was. It might have been... I don't even re it might have been warm and natural, something with a scrim so that it didn't fall apart too much. And the cats picked at it and that went away. The flannel that I've got is white, 108 inch wide flannel, and I bought it with extra length because I did pre-wash it. And I pre-washed it to get the sizings and finishes out and to shrink it up more because I I would like it to be a tighter weave when it goes up on the wall. You can get gridded flannel and you can get gray flannel and you, you know you can you can get these things. I did not I I don't want that much of a grid on my design wall. I find it distracting. What I did do though is draw Okay, so you've seen that. You can order, um, if you just Google gridded design wall, you can find all kinds of op options. And now that I know that'll disappear, I'm just going to pull it down and make it go. Because I want to tell you what I did with my wall, and it's been um, not all that long ago. I don't know why it took me this long to think of it. I got my rulers out, and I used a level, and I drew 
horizontal lines lightly with my pencil. Um, I believe my lines are 12 inches apart or they're 10 and 5 inches apart. I, you know, I've got lines and I may go in and add some more light lines. Before I used to eyeball level and I'm really enjoying having these light pencil lines across. Okay, I glue. Now, let's imagine you've got the foam, foam boards up. They're screwed in. You're ready to go. And you need to glue your stuff to it. If you're going to use spray glue, make sure you get one that is not solvent based because solvents on the foam can cause it to melt. I know that what I used before was an Elmer's spray glue and I looked online and didn't find exactly what I thought would work. But if you actually went to Lowe's or Home Depot, you might find it. The Gorilla Glue says that well, it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be multi-purpose and it's supposed to work on, on foam. So give that a look. Make sure it says that it dries clear. If you didn't want to fool with spray at all, you could try using white glue. Again, use something that's clear. If I was using Elmer's, what I would do is pour some of it out onto like a pie plan, pie pan, and add a little bit of water, not too much because you don't want it too thin. And I would use a brush and brush it on the foam and then move the flannel up onto it. Now, I have a video that shows you more or less how I did it. Um, you'll see. Once the foam is up and I'm ready to put the flannel or batting over the wall, I have to prepare the space because I do like to use the spray glue and there is overspray. And if you're not careful, you can end up with sticky spray glue all over everything. So I get four plastic drop cloths and I like the kind that has tape at one end. And I put the tape side against the wall on all four sides. And I open the plastic out into the room and use more painter's tape to stick it up into place so that I've got a box basically of protection. And I would move the computer and my computer desk and everything else that's hanging loose that I can move back away from the spray. Then I take my pre-washed extra wide flannel and pin it to the wall because I need to make sure it's going to fit before I glue it in place. I usually put a finished edge against that wall. And when I say usually, I've only done this twice. <laughs> so, so the next time it will be the same. I'll put the selvage edge over there, probably with just a little extra so that once it's glued down, I can tuck that selvage in around the foam at the edge of the wall. And at the top, I give myself a little extra because I will trim it off and then tuck that in too when I'm done. But just in case things shift in the process, I don't want it to fall short after part of it's been glued. So I get my flannel and I pin it in place. Then I run a line of pins about midway horizontally across the wall. I carefully unpin at the top and let that part of the flannel fall. And as it comes down, I typically find a place, maybe the top of the flannel, and pin it to the wall below where that first bank of pins is, because otherwise the weight of the flannel might pull all the pins free. Then I spray glue a band just above where the pins are, and I bring the flannel up, get that pat it into place, add more pins, and do the same 
all the way up the edge of the wall. I don't finish out the top edge at that time. I go ahead and then work on the bottom part. Now that I think about it, as you work up the wall, getting the flannel in position, you have to pay attention to the right side of the flannel that falls below. That needs to be protected from the overspray. So when it's totally covered by the flannel on top, not a problem. But once this gets taller at the bottom, I kind of remember doing this now. I did a soft folded roll, bringing that up the wall and pinned it in place so the wrong side of that flannel was exposed to the overspray. And then when it's time, after you finish the top, and you're ready to start doing the same process below, working from the middle down, you can unroll that folded roll and get it into position without getting glue on the right side of your flannel. Once you get the flannel all stuck to the wall, then you can trim away the excess fabric. And in some places, you can leave enough edge so that you can tuck it between the edge of the foam and say the ceiling above or the wall below. On this side, the next time I do it, I actually might cut a one by two to fit up next to the edge of the foam so that I can trim that edge and then tuck the excess fabric between the edge of the foam and the edge of the one by two. At the bottom, because of the way my baseboards are, for me it makes more sense to cut the flannel even with the edge of the foam. It might be different at your house. Okay, I wanted to show you the edge of the foam that has been exposed there at the, as you looked at it, the left side of my design wall. I painted the edge. It doesn't look so much blue anymore and it's not totally tidy. And I, I, it hasn't really bothered me for, what, 15 years? So it's not, I guess I have a tolerance for that. I know that Linda, um, she boxed the edge of her design wall with molding, with trim. And it's a nice look. It's really a better look than that. Now, I've got a video that shows you how I use my design wall. Here we go. The best part of having a design wall is that you can put your blocks and pieces up on it. And because I pre-wash, I can put blocks up on the flannel just as easy as that. And I can stack blocks, typically, if I ever needed to. That's only really handy when you're stacking pieces on top of each other say for applique when you're trying out new things. Typically, you might have things set up like this. Will fabric that has not been pre-washed stick to the wall? Probably so, up to a point. But there's a gloss on the fabric. There's a finish that makes it stick less well. Do I use pins? Yes, yes I do, especially because I have cats. Okay, on my design wall, the pins I use most often when I'm pinning up blocks or um, applique shapes are the three quarter inch pins from Clover. And the reason I do that is because my, my foam is not, it, it's a little bit shallower, so I must have the half inch foam. Um, it, you know, they stay put. Two things about the pins. Um, one is that foam has been up there a long time and you know how it is on your design wall. You have a tendency to put things in kind of the same place. I have been stunned that the foam hasn't disintegrated in the areas where I pin the most. Really, I figured, you know, you pin so much the foam falls apart. I figured I'd have to replace it and I have not. It's great. Um, the other thing is, so when I'm pinning up applique pieces or small things that I don't want to look at the pins when I'm looking at what's going on on my design wall, 
I do use those smaller pins. When I'm pinning up something like this, like a quilt that's heavy, I use bigger pins, uh, like quilter's pins. They seem to hold better. Now, Myra, hi Myra. <laughs> Myra, Myra has been with Piece of Cake for a very long time. Um, Myra wrote to say her husband bought a screen for watching movies and it rolls down and she put the gridded flannel on the screen and she uses that as a design wall and that is not a bad idea uh, there are other let's see so there's gridded movie screens I'm trying to think what else rolls down there might be something even even more specifically um, meant for this you know what you could do I mean you could even make your own thing like that that didn't retract up but that you have some sort of a sleeve at the bottom if you made a, a casing at the bottom of whatever say a sheet that you covered with the gridded flannel and you put a casing at the top and a casing at the bottom and put a heavy but not too heavy pipe or rod above and below below for weight and to keep it out and above to hang it from either from the wall or the ceiling you could do that and then when you're done with it you could roll it up and make it go away both of these good ideas and if i was in a different space i would absolutely consider that i am lucky enough in my house to have a place where i can have a permanent design wall because what I would, what I imagine, not having had this kind of thing, what I imagine I might not like so much about that kind of a flexible um, design wall is that pinning into it would, I'm not sure how well that would work. And I find myself putting up things that need pinning enough that, you know, I think I would miss the pinability of the, um, of the design wall up, but that's me. I wonder if you could put the foam just behind it so that you could pin through it, but the foam then would stash under the bed, right, when you weren't using it, and then you'd roll up the design wall. That would be another way to combine the two. I hope that made sense. All right, then <laughs> the next thing is keeping it tidy. Let me show you one thing. Oops. Every, every now and then I take a lint roller to the wall. Oh, whoop. Okay, so that was me showing you that I take a lint roller. And that was one of the things when I was putting this um, time out together that I, I did actually look closer at the, um, at the bottom of my design wall and understand that the cats really have rubbed up against it. I, I may have to um, re-up the flannel on the design wall, but... I wanted to show you this area there that you see on the right. It's when I'm working at my standing desk, it's directly, I, oh, Lorna says they, that you can't see me. Nope, you can't see me because I'm here. <laughs> I'm showing you this picture. Okay, so that picture is, um, uh, this picture that you see right here, why am I sh I know why I'm showing you this because when I'm working at my standing desk and that part of my design wall is next to me, I use it as a bulletin board because it's over. It's not in a good place for, uh, like if I'm putting a quilt up, I, it doesn't usually make it that far over anyway, but you can't really see that I have a second layer of flannel in that area. And the reason I do is because <laughs> I had, I don't know, I was drinking something like coffee and something got in my throat. And I'm sharing this human fact with you because we've all done something like this. You know, you've got coffee in your mouth and you have to cough and whoosh, got all, all over the wall. <laughs> 
and I looked at that mess and I thought to myself, well, darn it. Um, that, that makes me very unhappy because I thought I was going to have to redo the whole wall. And I decided not to do that. I just got a small piece of flannel and covered up the mess I'd made. And it works really well. And it's made me think that maybe when I redo my wall, if all I need to do is just put up a second layer of flannel, if I pre-wash it and I put pins in key areas, I may not have to peel up what peel off what's there to put up new flannel. I, I'm certainly going to give that a go. And I'm sharing that with you on the off chance that it helps you if you have to um, tidy up your own design wall. And I thought, See, I thought I'd be a little bit short of 30 minutes today, and I am. I actually thought I'd be shorter than, than this. I mean, you know, that this would be even a much shorter one. So the design wall, however you make it work, it's one of the most important tools I use because I put up works in progress. I put up things I'm thinking about, depending on the sizes of things. It's a really excellent place to work. It's, it's really, I, I can't imagine not having one. Let me see if Lorna has sent another question. Oh, okay. Um, Brendan, Brendan Berg says uh, the design wall, Brendan, are you male or female or does it matter? Which, whichever. <laughs> Brendan, uh, your design wall is a photographer's portable metal backdrop stand. Yeah, that does work well. I've got some of those. And Myra says, yeah, hers already had a, um, a rod at the bottom. She pre-washes pre and, and her blocks always stick. Yeah, they would. If you pre-wash your fabric, it'll pretty much always stick to the design wall. So that's all excellent. Um, good to know. All good to know and the idea of a design wall that rolls up is a good one so yay us we are we are on it okay so that's it for today I'm going to tell you my email address again becky.pieceofcake at gmail.com if you have something you would like me to show you or share with you please let me know I am happy to do that and, yes, it is practically, oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Yes, it's practically time to go. And I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 2 o'clock Central Time. I don't know what o'clock it will be where you are, but for me, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And until then, I hope you have many happy stitches. Thanks for watching.